Hi, this is Dr. Wallach. I just wanted to quickly put together a little video to talk about five changes I've noticed in Logic Pro X. I've been using it for a few weeks now, and these are some things that have impacted my workflow. The first one is the floating tool palette. Uh, that actually used to be associated with the escape key, and I actually took to actually calling this the escape tool palette, but uh, now I could, and it was an easy way to move back and forth between the various tools, like the pointer tool and the pencil tool, the eraser tool, etc. Now actually the key is actually associated with it is the T key. So I guess I'm going to have to change what I call this. Um, but if you just want to refer to this as a floating tool palette, the, the T key is what you want to actually press on the keyboard now in order to switch between these tools and bring up this floating tool palette. Uh, a little bit different, but not too, too big a deal unless you're associated used to the escape key. The other thing is musical versus absolute time. If you're used to switching between bars and beats and uh, actually minutes and seconds, uh, there was this nice little key, uh, this little button up at the top right hand corner that you could do that quickly in Logic 9. Now it's actually buried quite a bit. So if you go in the file menu, go to the project settings general, that's going to bring up the uh, window here that actually allows you to uncheck this box that says use musical grid. I'm not sure why this feature got buried um, in a sub menu like that in a project setting. Uh, I, used, I actually like the old way better where I could switch quickly between it with the button. Next is musical typing. This is handy if you're on a laptop uh, being able to quickly hit the caps lock and uh, use the key, the computer keyboard to actually play notes on the keyboard. Um, that's actually now, uh, they've changed the name of it and it's no longer associated with the caps lock. You have to use command K in order to get to musical typing is what it's called now. Um, the other thing I noted here, it used to work uh, well in whatever type of track you had selected, but now I've noticed that I have to actually have a software instrument selected or a MIDI track selected before it it will work. Uh, input monitoring, this uh, behavior changed uh, quite a bit and was kind of confusing. Uh, if you record enable to track in Logic 9, it would automatically enable input monitoring and the, the I button was right next to it. That was just for monitoring separate from the record process. Now in Logic Pro X, if you start recording um, record process, record enable a track, you actually won't hear anything. You have to then press the I button in order to get to the input monitoring and hear it. It'll work separately from record, but in record you have to press it as well. Lastly, the arrange window. Uh, this is not really a workflow thing, more just a cosmetic uh, name change here. It used to always be the arrange window where you would move ar regions around in time and arrange things in time. Now it's actually referred to as the main window. I guess this is just a, something that will separate old logic users from new logic users, uh, getting used to calling it the main window instead of the arrange window. But there you have it, short and sweet, uh, five changes that I've noticed in Logic Pro X.